It is everyone. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, I am Ovalentuk. I work as uh, senior software engineer in uh, Red Hat. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, disaster recovery in Mogur. Um, so let's start. Okay, so uh, any of you went to the over workshop yesterday, maybe? I believe halfway, so uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'll keep it short. Uh, over it, in a nutshell, is uh, it's an open source project we started by Red Hat. It is a virtualiz virtualization management platform, and uh, it's built on a Linux virtualization you already know, like ABM, QM, on Bigbird. Uh, it, uh, actually manages virtual machines like VMs and templates, also a uh, storage domain with virtual, create virtual disks on them, and uh, virtualized networks. So uh, this is the architecture of uh, Overt. Uh, I'm going to focus mainly on the Overt engine part, combined with the uh, shared storages, shared storage domains. Um, uh, this is going to be the disaster recovery uh, session that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so uh, Orange supports a few types of storage domains, mainly uh, file storage domain and block storage domains. On the file storage domain, Orange supports uh, storage domains like NFS, Glaster, POSIX compliant FS, and the local storage domain. On the block storage domains, uh, Orange supports uh, the fiber channel storage domain and I study storage domain. So while I'm building uh, this presentation, I was thinking what's the first thing that crossed my mind when talking disaster recovery. So the first thing that crossed my mind was Murphy's Laws. And uh, maybe the, the most uh, sentence I really liked is uh, if there is a worse time for something to go wrong, it will happen then. You can really anticipate disaster. Actually, when you uh, the difference between other features that you develop and disaster recovery is that you really wish that you will never use this feature ever. You don't really think about disaster when you're writing your program. You think that everything will work and you, you don't have any bugs. Uh, so this is how disaster recovery is really important because when a disaster occurs, you really want your data to be restored as quickly as possible. Uh, so this is kind of a unique feature that every, uh, every application needs. <coughs> okay, so uh, these are four general reasons why we need disaster recovery. Um, most of them are general, machines and hardware might fail, and humans also make mistakes, and nature is unpredictable. But I think I want to focus mostly about the customer want access 24-7, 365 days a week. So this is a bit misleading because customers, they want it, but actually they more expect us to be accessed 24-7, 365 days a week, uh, a year. I mean, think of the, uh, you're connecting to your Gmail server, and Gmail tells you, well, we are sorry, we had a disaster, so all your mails got deleted. Uh, we are sorry. <laughs> I and mean, the minute that will happen, you won't use Gmail anymore. So, in the era today, this is really crucial. You need to have all the data, and customer expects you that you will have this data anytime and at any place. So, how we are using disaster recovery in over it until over 3.5. So in Over 3.5, among other uh, features, we had a special storage domain called the Expo Storage Domain. The Expo Storage Domain is a domain which is a file storage domain, and it is mainly a, a special storage domain that contains all the VMs and templates and all the disks in it. Uh, it is based on an OVF, and I'm going to explain a bit about what is OVF. So, OVF is an uh, open virtualization uh, platform, uh, sorry, format, and uh, it actually 
describes the VM configuration. When you're talking about management like OVIRT, uh, this is only the, configura the configuration of the VMs. The VM, actually the process itself, the QM process, running on a host. Okay. OVIRT simply tells you if the VM is running or how much memory it got or how much CPU it got. So the OVF actually is uh, an extra representation of all this data which consists in your database that over it actually reflects. So once a VM is being uh, exported to the export storage domain to be uh, used as a backup, uh, what actually is being done is that we copy all the VM disks into this export domain and we also take all this data from the database, convert it to an OVF file and put it on the export storage domain. So once we have it backed up in the export storage domain and a disaster occurs, we can just use the export storage domain, import it to a data, another data center and import it back into the database. Um, so among other uh, things that you can do with the export storage domain, so like I said, you can use it to migrate entities between different setups or data centers. Uh, it can be moved between setups. So this is the main difference between an original and, a, uh, and this is the main difference between a data storage domain and export storage domain. And it also can be used uh, to backup entities. Okay, so can anyone tell me maybe what could be a problem? Uh, there are several problems using the export domain as a backup. Well, I won't get hard new, but um, I will just. There are three main problems with using the export domain as a backup storage domain. The first problem is mainly scalability. Okay, you're using one storage domain to backup all your data center. So it can be used very good for small data centers, but once you are uh, adding more VMs and more disks, you need to also add. Uh, more storage to your export domain. So when we are talking about data center of thousands of VMs and thousands of disks, you will have to maintain some kind of uh, petabytes or uh, a lot of storage to, to maintain for this export domain. Well, another main problem is that copying data just takes too long. Okay, try to copy terabytes, it will take you days and even weeks. Okay, if you want to use backup and you want to use it very quickly for recovery, it's not a practical solution. The third problem is you have a single point of failure. Once your export domain gets uh, ruined, then all your data center is at risk. Okay, you can lose the uh, storage room, the, all, all your data, and you won't have a uh, backup. So what was introduced in over 3.5? So, storage domain until 3.5 contain uh, several uh, properties. Um, one of the properties is the metadata, which is actually the type of the storage domain and the FS, for example. Uh, the storage pool, which is uh, attached to uh, what kind of uh, storage domain is it and its name. And it also contains all the disks. So, what we added in over 3.5 is that we added a new special disk called the OVF store disk. Okay, the OVF store disk actually uh, encapsulate all the OVF that, we talked, uh, that I talked earlier in the export domain into one, uh, one tar file and just put it on the, on the OVF store disk on the storage. So the storage itself becomes uh, more of a self-contained of all its data because he already had the disks, he also had the knowledge about the VMs and the templates, so you can actually use it uh, very um, uh, flexibly with other uh, data centers and other setups. The other feature which was introduced is the import data storage domain. So until over 3.5 you couldn't really uh, use a data storage domain in other setups or in other data centers. Now you can import the data storage domain. So once we have the OVF store disk, 
and we also can import the data storage domain, it has actually become much more easy to use it uh, for backup and recovery because you don't need to copy it anymore. All the disks are already there in the storage domain. So uh, with the obvious store disk, you simply register those VMs into the new set. So uh, I'm going to show you an example how it is being used in Overt. So let's say you have a disaster, and now you uh, build up a new setup, and you want to import the storage domain, and you want to use those VMs which, is, which are in it to uh, register them and recover them. So first of all, uh, you import the storage domain. This is an example of importing, for example, uh, an NFS storage domain, simply put the export path. Once it's being imported, we attach it to a data center. And then you can see here all the VMs which uh, this storage domain contains. This is actually the OVF. We take the OVF from the storage domain, the OVF store this. We uh, generate this data and uh, we show it in this sub-tab here. So the user can pick which VMs he wants to register and recover. After they recover, we choose the cluster and the quota for each entity. Cluster and quota are uh, logical entities in the in over. It actually reflects the feature those VM supports. So for example, if a VM has a shared disk, which is a feature which was introduced in 3.1, we can't register into a cluster which is supports only 3.0. Um, so after that being done, the VMs just registered into the, into the setup. So the main differences between the export domain and the import storage domain is that we don't use any copy. All the disks are already in the storage domain itself. So what we really use is only the obvious store disk, only the XML. So this operation takes much less time and it's more, much more practical to use for recovery today. Um, <clears throat> so as we saw, uh, we don't use the copy operation so it takes much less time. There is not a single uh, point of failure because there are many storage domains and in case of a problem you, you can start for a partial setup or just uh, start using it as it is. And um, we also uh, don't have the scalability issue anymore. So this is an estimation of how much time it will take us to recover a uh, setup. And you can see here the, the red thing here, the red area is the time that will take the export domain. It's mostly an estimation because you can't really know how the storage domain will act and behave uh, underlying. But well, you see the differences. There is a major difference. The yellow line here is actually the time that it takes to import the data storage domain and uh, register all these VMs. And you can see that the copy operation, uh, since it's not being used in the import data storage domain, uh, you can see really the, the difference between the two. So what are we planning in the future? Well, we still have some uh, more nice uh, uh, improvements that we want to, to uh, add to this feature. Uh, for example, we want to uh, clone the Amazon templates from a storage domain, just to take the storage domain and clone it into another storage domain and uh, try to import <coughs> one VM from one storage domain and maybe clone another VM from the clone storage domain and use it in the same setup. Um, convert an export domain to a data domain so uh, people can should not do all this operation of copying it to another data domain and um, you can also suggest other things that you are uh, interested of or you think that can be really cool in the monitor community site here um, 
So this is a wiki link of the feature itself. You can see YouTube videos, how it can be done, the recovery, for example, of a local data center. You can do recovery for Blaster, and how the info file storage domain really uh, behaves and how, how to use it in over. So everything is really on the net, and you can see how it's really simple to use. Okay, well, it was fast. Are there any questions? Yeah. support all of those uh, storage domains. So actually, over use each storage domain is a virtualized uh, storage domain. So um, the OVF store disk actually, once it is being copied into one of these type of storage domain, then you are actually set. Okay, over it can work with it. Just need to import this uh, storage domain, which is actually over it uh, already supports it, the integration of this and once it's being uh, connected with the hosts to use it as a shared storage for example then uh, it, it simply gets the, the device of uh, the OVF store disk and just register all the XML from there so it's pretty virtualized I and mean, it's really already being done in over it before we just use this uh, to register those uh, entities. So, so for example, if I'm using uh, a storage domain as the local you know, database, how can I transfer from one local like, physical machine to another? Ah, OK. So, um, Next, you know, it's the half a file of, of that physical machine. <laughs> yeah. So what's being done is once you're creating your new setup, for recovery, then you create uh, a new data center, a new uh, local data center, and once we import this local storage domain, you have to use the same host as before because it's local. I mean, it's on the host itself. If you don't have connection to it, then you can't really use it. So once the storage domain is exist on the host server. We just use the host to mount it to itself and just take all the data from it. So the data is already there. Actually, um, well, there is an example in YouTube how it can be done. But are you asking uh, like how we can do it practically in Overit or how it's being done underlying the video SAM or the host itself? Is that answered your question? What I is it just yes, I think Berkeley, I know like Berkeley, I know how to get apps done. Like how fast, you know, as you said, the, the storage demand, the storage demand would have us to make it faster to make not to wait until like two or three day transfer, but to be able to to, to transfer to recover it faster. Instead of two days, but maybe a day or two hours, when the disaster recovery. So, are you talking especially about the local storage domain? How does that help you recover from it? Comparing to the extra domain, for example? Uh, well, actually, the local storage domain or any data storage domain is not really different. Uh, regarding the OVF storage from any other storage domain. The thing about the export storage domain is that, that it is a separate storage domain that we just needed to copy the data. The disks, the copy of the disks itself was a bottleneck for uh, the recovery operations. So once we are 
preserving this object or this one of storage domain, it doesn't really matter if you're using a local raster or NFS because um, because all the data is there. So, for example, before the C point five, let's say that you use a local storage domain, and now we had a disaster, and we want to recover all your data. So, the local storage domain is, uh, so for example, uh, the local storage domain didn't really have those VMs before. So, you need to copy them again. You need to attach the export domain and uh, copy them again to the local storage. So this is the main, the main bottleneck or the main issue that takes time. So regarding, I mean, again, regarding the local the NFS, the cluster, all the rest of the storage domains, uh, whether they are shared or whether they are local, it should be the same process. Virtually, we are using the storage domain as a storage domain and get the other sort of this. So I hope I answered your question. If not, uh, we can talk. Uh, uh, any other questions? Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you.